Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is a Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, February 9th and this is the Search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. First up, we have our big Google Webmaster report for February. Um, the big things obviously was the PageSpeed update. There was a bunch of unconfirmed Google updates that we covered. The release of the Google Search Console with 16 months of data. Uh, Google promising that AMP URLs will actually canonicalize and actually be the canonical uh, to the actual main URL, so it won't be like a, an AMP cache URL anymore in the future. And Google opening up a new Twitter account to help communicate with Google uh, with uh, search features. So that's the big thing. You can check, check uh, everything out there. If you were gone for the whole month and you want to catch up quickly, just check that post out. Um, Google's now requiring uh, those who are using um, AMP article article schema, um, and they have AMP, um, you know, in there. They have to actually go ahead and um, add higher res images. Um, the AMP article schema uh, for the tops to be included in the top stories carousel has been updated to um, from 696 pixels wide to now 1200 pixels wide. I'm not sure if something new is coming about that they're not that Google didn't tell us about yet. But the schema, article schema requirements have changed to increase from 696 pixels to 1200 pixels, which is might be a big deal if you already are using something like 696 pixels. So that's kind of annoying. Um, but yet Google might be so making that user experience a little bit better. Bing announced this week that they are doing multi-perspective answers. It's kind of like two feature snippets. So here you see it. This is from Bing. They're calling it multiple uh, multi-perspective um, multi multi-perspective answers and you can see there's two answers for cholesterol questions two perspectives um, so I always thought like why not for feature snippets or these answers intelligent answers from Bing so if you were typing something as like is Trump a good president if you like Trump show that answer if you don't like Trump show a different answer and so forth um, or maybe show perspectives on that like they're doing here and that's what they're doing they're kind of taking like all right is hot yoga good for you yes or no and stuff like that coffee and so forth um, Google did show how they're doing it um, in that post where I talked about the feature snippets last week, um, but I don't believe this is live. Um, it's just kind of an idea of kind of expanding that query a little bit. Because um, I don't think Google or Bing want to be the truth. They just want to give you perspectives, and that's a good way of doing it. Google may be showing fewer featured snippets in the search results, according to data from both Rank Ranger and Mozcast. Um, you can see the dip in featured snippets. Of course, um, s only some industries are actually complaining about it from what I've seen. Um, and it doesn't really make sense to me why Google would actually reduce the number of feature snippets because, again, only voice search, Google Assistant stuff is actually increasing. So you need more of those feature snippets. And that's been the trend that they've been showing more and more feature snippets over the past year or two. And now to automatically dive, maybe they did some quality stuff, maybe feature snippets are on tracking knowledge graph and stuff like that. Maybe Google has more answers, not from the feature snippets. Maybe that's the answer. I'm not exactly sure, um, but we will see. Um, this is bugging me all week. Um, I emailed Google. It took a while for them to get back to me. I posted at Search and Land finally when they got back to me, and then I posted this morning at Search and Roundtable, basically saying that Google has removed. So when you went to, go ahead and go submit a URL to Google, you can do this in Google Search Console by going to Google Search Console, clicking in the, like, um, crawl area and saying submit to in the, uh, fetches Google and then from there once you fetch a URL you're able to click on request indexing when you do that you can say only crawl this URL or crawl URLs with direct and they used to give you quotas for both your quota for this option was only 10 submissions per month and you, it tells you how many you have left and what your quota is I think this was 500 URLs but in any event when you go there now the quota has been removed from here in the user interface but in the Google Help Docs, it still shows the quota as being you know, 500 URLs for that and 10 URLs a month for the other thing. So we're, I'm not clear why they removed it if they're testing, letting people submit as many as they want. They don't want to comment about it. But I did see Anesh, or Ashesh, I don't even pronounce his name, from Google. He's a Googler, respond to somebody this morning about that, saying, it seems like a temporary issue. Can you hit shift refresh and try again? So either he's unaware of the change or maybe it's a bug. I tried shift refreshing. I still don't see the quota listed there as well. Um, so it's hard to see what's exactly going on. And I don't understand the rationale behind this at all. Why not just tell me it's a bug and not say nothing? Um, so something's going on with that. Google 
um, says, don't dynamically change your sitemap files name daily. So there's one publisher who said, they have so much content on a daily basis, they dynamically create new sitemap files with the timestamp of the day. So they would create like hundreds of new sitemap files with the timestamps on them and delete the old sitemap files. And, and John Mueller said, that's not a good idea. You wanna keep the sitemap file names the same because you don't wanna have Google to actually go ahead and you don't wanna have Google to actually figure out what your new sitemap files are. Um, two, in those sitemap files, you could actually add new, new URLs. Um, obviously, this is a special situation. It's very interesting to actually listen to this one. So if you are, if you do have a massive site and you are thinking about doing dynamically generated sitemap files with the sitemap file names changing, take a look at that. It's very, very interesting. Google said even big sites like Wix are not allowed to go ahead and buy and sell links that manipulate Google search results. Um, some people have been complaining that Wix has been spying and selling links or telling web, uh, their users how to link to them. And John Mueller said, no, 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 it doesn't make a difference how big you are, you can still get hit. Google even hit themselves in the past. Um, so again, just be careful with links. The bigger you are, the harder you fall. Google has dropped the quick links or what they call tappable links or tappable shortcuts from the Google search app. So these links here are no longer there. If you go there now, it's just the screen. And Google said basically, even though they launched it a year ago and they thought it would be great, it's basically people don't really want it and they are bringing the content that people want in the Google search app. Google AdWords is cracking down on ticket resellers. So if you are a ticket reseller, you actually now have to certify with Google um, about your business and only then can you go ahead and advertise your, tickets resell, uh, your ticket sales on Google AdWords. Um, there's an announcement about that. It's been coming on and Google's been telling these people for a while and now it actually is enforced and we're going to be enforced now. Um, Google AdWords is testing a missed call ad extension. So I think this is just in India and supposedly I didn't realize this, but this is a big deal. So you would basically make a phone call to a business, hang up quickly so they don't answer. This way you don't have to, you can save money on your phone call and that business will call you back. Um, so I guess that's what this does, missed call. Um, and maybe basically you click that, it will do one ring, hang up right away, and that business will call you back as opposed to just clicking call. I didn't realize that, but that's a pretty neat feature. I didn't know people do that in India. Um, very, very cool. Um, there is a bug, I think it's a very small bug, Google's calling this an edge case, where if you're using any bid strategy outside of maximum conversion bidding and you switch then to maximum maximize conversion bidding, your CPCs will skyrocket. Now again, it doesn't seem to be impacting a lot of people, only a few people. Michelle from Google said this is an edge case and you can see this guy's CPC skyrocket when he switched uh, from using, I think, targeted ORS or something like that to max uh, bid. So be careful with that. Take a look at that. If you do switch, definitely um, watch that and Google's looking into that as well. Uh, Google Search Console had an issue specifically with the, the AMP reporting this week. Um, they basically said if you saw a number of content mismatch errors, um, they fixed that. It may be due, due to, uh, there was a major content mismatch error issue. So basically... Google wrote that some users may be seeing elevated levels of errors of the type uh, major content mismatch due to processing errors on our side. They say the correct error counts should return to the actual levels in a few days. So definitely take a look at that if you're using AMP. Make sure everything is stable um, as of that date. Google Search Console now is uh, sending a new Search Console message to webmasters telling them if they have low res fav icons, the little icons you see um, usually in the URL bar, um, on Chrome and so forth, um, that if you have bad fav icons or small res, they want higher resolution fav icons, and this is what the message looks like, and they tell you why, because it improves click-through rate and so forth uh, in the Chrome browser or in Android. Um, Google's, this is interesting, so Google's showing a new way to show content within a certain date range. So when you go in the search results, sometimes Google will say this was posted within X minutes or X hours. Um, so here's an example. This is just as in 11 hours. It's weird. I mean, why? usually it says, you know, five minutes ago or five hours ago. This Google's testing showing in 11 hours. What does that mean even, in 11 hours? It's like in the future? Um, so that's pretty interesting. Google My Business is now asking some business owners to specify when their business actually opened, the date that they opened. And this was covered, found, found by Tim. Um, you can see a screenshot here. It's actually asking you, when did your business first open? You click on it, you can actually specify an open month and year, or you can actually specify the actual open month, year, date, and uh, month, year, and date. So that's pretty cool. I tested it myself and it does work. 
Chrome went ahead and announced, Google from Chrome, Google Chrome announced that the, the version of Chrome coming out in July will mark all HTTP pages as not being secure. So if it's just HTTP, not HTTPS, Google will say not secure in the browser. So make sure you go ahead and update all your sites to be HTTPS across the board. I know some of you don't like that, but Chrome is doing that. It's not a search penalty, it's a Chrome um, label. Um, and of course, we did our search community honors this week, and we obviously like to honor those who actually contribute a lot to our search industry in many, many ways. So of course, Juiced, uh, Juiced DeVault, who the founder of Yoast, one of the most widely, I think the most widely used SEO plugin or plugin for WordPress, um, and if he's done speaks all around the world, helps in SEO in so many other ways, of course, the Yoast plugin. Uh, Joy Hawkins, a local SEO who helps tremendously in the local SEO community and beyond. Cyrus Shepard, who helps more on the technical front. He's formerly at Moz, now doing a lot of his own things. He's a really, really great contributor. Paul Shapiro, another good technical SEO, always on the latest topics, testing things, trying things out, and sharing those tests and speaking and so forth about that. Thank you. And Pratik uh, from India, really, really... Um, He's fairly new to the SEO industry, but yet he's made such a big, bold change, especially in India and across the world uh, for the SEO industry. So thank you all very much for everything you guys do. In any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz Reader Recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. Again, today is Friday, February 9th. Everyone have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next. Bye.